We would like to wish everyone who is of the blood and in the condition a very pleasant good evening. My name is Chet Johnson, formerly with KZAP and KSFM radio stations. We are gathered here to touch, see, hear, smell, and feel the heavy currents and vibrations of the black experience. We will explore the rituals of black life, journey through the black community of ideas, walk down the passageways of the ancestors, imagine beautiful and sacred places, and love. Our guide and creator of these experiences and perceptions is a truly gifted, talented, and potent poet. He was born in East St. Louis, Illinois, and carved out of the black tradition. He is a published poet with such books as The Century of Four Golden Pillars, River of Bones and Flesh and Blood, and Song from an Afrophone to his credit. Truly a poet for all seasons. Brothers and sisters, let us put our hands together and welcome Brother Eugene Redmer. The first intellectual that I met in my life was a man named John Henry Redmond, Sr. And um, he's been my guiding light, although I didn't see my father uh, often uh, during my childhood. Uh, he's always been my guiding light. So I celebrate uh, anybody else named John Henry and a particular kind of folk uh, hero in the black community with this poem, Epigrams for My Father, John Henry Redmond Sr. Father Law, Papa Rights, Daddy Hood, Run and Trap Song, Search and Dodge Song, Still Hammering Man, Gunbowder, Whiskey Warrior, Night God, Moon Baller, Brawler, Grown Old. Slaughterhouse, River Mac Man, yes, High Tail Teller and Totem Pole Man. Wanderer Across Waters, Wanderer Across Waters, Folk Brilliance and Genius Grit, Folk Brilliance and Genius Grit, Rail Raging, Rail Splitter, Rail Rage, Rail Rage, I see, and BMNO, and Mopac, and Midnight Special, Fred Train. Bring my daddy back. Stone Story, the story of stone. Broken bricks, rocks hurled in pleasure and rage. Pebbles soft and silent. Home dome is a blues hard head. 45 degree hat. Bull derm butt billing from lips. Gabardine, shining, shining, shining above white silk socks. Satin man, yeah, satin man. Silk sure and still strong. Silk sure and still strong. Hammer hold on life. Hammer hold on life. Sun, sun, stone, bone, black blitz. Father law, struggle deep. Afri dark, Afro log, Daddy depth, River bottom song. When I was a boy, um, my friends and I often admired uh, many of the uh, characters in the black community who were um, 
outside of the law. And often, the cultural folk heroes who are dear to black people live outside of white law. Um, I like to celebrate what I see as the uh, most recent picture of this particular character, whom you may know as Bo Diddley, you may know him as Kansas City Slim, you may know him through Hard Silver as Filthy McNasty, you may know him by way of Quincy Jones as Killer Joe, you may know him as Johnny of Frankie and Johnny, you may know him as Jody Grind, or Two Gun Pete, or Buster Slim, or John Henry. But uh, for me, uh, he's the man whose nose is invaded. And so I call this poem, Invasion of the Nose, for a friend of mine in East St. Louis, Illinois, named Joseph Harrison. His nose was his radar. His eyes, icy darts that moved faster than speed of sound jets. He could rap like a pneumatic drill or croon like Smokey Bill when the occasion arose. He was a cool, hip, off into a thing dude, mellow in yellow silk undershirts, exposed through unbuttoned jerseys from green fields. Dig this man, he would say, I ain't tripping with no jive ass bitch. <laughs> what I need is some Mary Jane. <laughs> he stood, hung, laid, dealt, bent on the corner. Bent, bent in a 20 degree angle. <laughs> One hand clutching the wrist of the opposite arm behind his back and he could dart like lightning into a five-foot female's ear his popping tongue titillated the titties of other men's wives and all adolescent girls and middle-aged ladies gave him fat fees for his flailing fingers he was an acknowledged action eater who was up to train, bird, prez, jughead, duke, count, Ray Charles, James Brown, and howling wolf. But one day, she found a hole in his soul, put a fertile fang in his thang, and his nose grew like blunderbuss barrels. And that's a black love story of a sort. <laughs> This poem was requested by a young school teacher in um, School District 189 in East St. Louis, Illinois. Uh, she asked me one day if I would write a poem that uh, more accurately represented the racial and historical connotations of the Mississippi River. And I think the river is very uh, significant for black people because if you look at our spirituals, that first great body of black poetry, you'll see constant references to rivers down by the riverside one more river to cross, you know, roll, Jordan, roll. Constant references to great bodies of water, which I feel sort of represent uh, racial memory for black people. And so I render at this time, River of Bones and Flesh and Blood, River Mississippi. River of time, vibrant vein, bent, crooked, Older than the red men who named you. Ancient as the winds that break on your serene and shining face. One time western boundary of America.
from whose center your broad shoulders now reach to touch sisters on the flanks. River of truth, mornings you leap, yawn 2,000 miles and shed a giant joyous tear over sprouting, straggling hives of humanity. Nights you weep as the moon tiptoeing across your silent, silky face hears you praying over the broken backs of black slaves who rode crouched and huddled at your heart in the bellies of steamships. River of memory, laboratory for Civil War boat builders who left huge eyes of steel staring from your sullen depths. Reluctant partner to crimes of Ku Klux Klansmen. River moved to waves of ecstasy by the venerable trumpet of Louis Armstrong. River of bones. River of bones and flesh. Bones and flesh and blood, the nation's longest intestine and largest conveyor belt. River Mississippi, river of little rivers, river of rises, sometimes subdued by a roof of ice, descending finally on your southward course to spit into the gulf and join the wrath of larger bodies. Ike Padgett. This poem is rather autobiographical, and you might say that it's sort of a collective biography of black young men. Um, who grown up in the urban areas of America. Doesn't have to be the urban areas, uh, but it touches on the experiences, I think, primarily of urban people. But it could be um, a part of the experiences of anybody, anywhere. The poem is called The Edge of Myself. I have run through the deserts of life Drinking sand from the hourglass. And I have yelled in the wars, eating the shoes of the big fishermen. I have passed the drunken policeman in the park, hiding my head and my own drunkenness. I have seen little boys and little girls play doing it in their clear blue adolescence. I have voted for the crooked politician whom I knew would only cram his own pocket. I have lost my lunch money in a high school dice game in the boys' toilet and wept afterwards. I have lit a cigarette but discarded from a rich man's glove, only to have an old lady spank my hand and call me naughty boy. And I blew smoke in her face to get even. Yes, yes, I rummaged the fragments of life, and knowing no quarter of peace, I ran to the edge of myself and screamed. vomiting shallow bubbles of hope down the highway of time. Yeah. Mr. Daniels. <laughs> this poem is called Angel of Mercy and was written while Angela Davis was in jail. 
And in it, I tried to imbibe all of the powers and all of the angers, the frustrations, the beauties, the strengths of black womanhood. And I'd like for you to repeat the word trials when you hear it. And we'll be joined, of course, by uh, Ed Jefferson on drums. So I'll read it this time, Angel of Mercy for Angela Yvonne Davis. When James Baldwin heard about Angela Davis's uh, incarceration, he wrote a letter to the New York Times in which he said, among other things, for if they take you in the morning, they will be coming for us that night. Trials. 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 Another trial. Another trial in the trek towards Sun Center, towards Sun Song, and Sun Song, and Song Gay, towards Yes Tomorrow. Angel, 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 Angela, Anvil and Arrow. Anvil and arrow, anvil and arrow, anviling and arrowing wind into word, impaled on the pitchfork of urgency. America is a pitchfork. African winds, words call and caucus your co queens. Shango's wife, Sojourner Troop, Harriet Tubman, Harriet Tubman, Mary Bethune, Catherine Dunham. Aretha Franklin. Trials. 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 One more river to cross. Angela, our angel of mercy. Angela, our angel of mercy. Angela, our angel of mercy. Word winged warrior. Thrust, thrust, thrust. Beat back the barrowed beast. Fly black flame lances to the gates of Ghana. Harlem. Haiti. Fillmore, Senegal, Watts, Congo, Chicago, Mojo, the jelly-minded jurist. Drop goo dust on canopies and sun porches of the mind. Thrust, 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 unbroken ebony bird, shuttling ancestral urgencies. Trial! Trial. Oh, trial. trial! We beat them back, back, back. One by one, a one by one, a one by two by one by two, a one by one, a one by one, a one by two by one by two, a one by one, a one by one, a one by two by one by two. Forgive them that deny and decry. Pray later for those sinners. Trial. Trial. Night is on trial. Day is on trial. Color is convicted. Color is convicted. Dusky skin will get you five to life, Jim. Ask Marcus. Ask Malcolm. Ask Martin. Ask the angel of mercy. Electrocute all ideas. Burn and gas the thinkers. Napalm the dissenters. Thus spake the Pentagon. Euro America, once more, say fairy tale fashion, from the fire and brimstone of diarrhea, from the lava of its own cavernous intestine. Angela, sacrifice for a perennial witch hunt. Angela. One more river to cross, one more river of blood to cross. One more cross to anvil into a spear. One more steeple to shake, one more steeple to shake. One more steeple to shake, one more steeple to shape into a sword. No more crosses to bear. Angela! 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 One more! One more! One more! One more rubber! To cross.
for real. When I was a small boy, I used to walk around uh, and see the men with uh, teeth missing, uh, you know, from their mouths, playing guitars, Jews harps, beating on tin cans or oatmeal boxes, uh, tap dancing on the concrete or whatever. And they were the forgotten musicians. They were the musicians without love, without audiences many times, and they died premature deaths. But I'd like to uh, think of the places where musicians assemble as being sacred places. And I see the theme of us being here tonight as um, that of blood links and sacred places. So I'd like to celebrate the people who keep us spiritually together. And of course, they are the musicians and the preachers, you know, and the women who run around gossiping and the show and tell folks and the hipsters because there's a songification going on all the time. But at this time, I like to celebrate the musicians in the poem, A Sacred Place. In all sacred places, Brooklyn, East St. Louis, Cleveland, Ibadan, Watts, Harlem, Chicago, Abidjan, Philly, jazzography is a serious religion. Professors, teachers, audiences study invisibly hooded holy men. Duke, Bird, Brown, those milestones who lunged battle ready from African, then New Orleans loins. The bandstand is the altar, no one blasphemes, not even my woman who kneels reverently with me each week and claims not to understand. And I came up with this poem, Humming, Hooking, and Cooking. And there's a little inscription here that says, you got me humming, and it's for Sam and Dave. Bodies bloat the air into an after supper casserole. Bodies sing now and are lovingly bruised, brushed, planted and pigtailed on a shifting bed of coals, caringly battered and cured marinated in perfume, talcum powder, aftershave love, sauced and sold, saladed in unintelligible vowels, colliding consonants, in whispers, in hums, in hisses through the body's alleys, through the sensuously uttering utensils, you tonsils, baking and brawling, in sweat, in tongue tickling jaw juice, yeah. <laughs> cooking in pillowcase ovens of ecstasy, on sheet covered thrill grills, hooking the meals of fulfillment onto clothespin fingers, fingers that grip medium rare rumps. Oh, well done, joy pebbles glistening, glistening, glistening on the shores of liver-like skin skillets. Succulent and surreal luscious. Succulent and surreal luscious. Peppery parting of a vaginal menu. Hocks humming in fried sweat. Boiling in sweat. Need enunciated in beer-flavored barbecue. Body choosing scrumptiously offered. Filet of desire, souffle, stewed orgasms, ground beef, milk warm tongues on platters, finger forks peeling back the foreskin of brown bananas. Bodies marinated. Lovingly bruised, fried in sweat, in spit. Lovingly bruised, 
talcum powder on medium rare muscles. Lips sipping lips, lips sipping lips. Bodies marinated, humming, a hooking, and a cooking. <laughs> I want to deal with love. Love is very close to all of us, I think, in a very real way, and for each of us in a very special way. I like to read this poem, Request, which was written in 1969 when I was in Oberlin, Ohio, recuperating from the wounds of uh, the liberation struggle in East St. Louis, Illinois. And this poem is called then, Request, if it's not asking too much. Long for me, baby. Anchor me deep within your within. Lodge my presence between your thoughts. Let me alternate with your breathing. Discrim discriminate in my favor. Labor late in my cause. Go through changes with me. Fashion your heart into a pen dipped in your blood and bleach Brand my name into the sky. Rise, rise up against those who put bad mouth on me. Do it. Stand, mama. Stand. <laughs> Stand still and wait relentlessly. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be Another poem that I think deals with love, and when I wrote this poem, a number of things were on my mind. Among those things were where did man come from? When did he break up into many colors? Where does man go when he leaves here? Where did woman come from? What is the cycle of birth all about? What about reincarnation? What is life? What is death? What is puberty? What is growth? These kinds of things were on my mind, and I wrote the poem, Sun Ritual, in an attempt to come to grips with um, the age-old questions, you know, about man. When did man begin to think? You know, what is his capacity to think? Why doesn't he think more? Sun Ritual. I know the ritual of the sun whose daily death has flattered every century, century's man. I know the ritual of man who lives in the nostrils of his grandsons and has a view of Earth's nocturnal plan. I know the ritual of Earth a fallow wintry desert, unwearied in its course, that cycles into birth. I know the ritual of man and sun, whose natural light upheaves the darkness and its eternity to run. I know the ritual 
of the sun. I know the ritual of the sun. Come on, Daniel. We press on now to what I feel is one of the two most favorite poems in my own community. And so in this poem, all the fire in black, on which I'll be joined by uh, guitarist Jimmy Daniels. Uh, I call Far Earth Mother. She had a wicked walk. Was well a thigh. A luscious, ripe, juicy, moving, grooving, black grape of a woman. And the poet pondered pounds of thighs, jungles of thighs that bend like branches and give forth juice. Black women have thighs and eyes that press against the mind, despite prisons of girdles and adhesive dresses. Brown, Beige, tan, black, thick, thin, throbbing eyes and thighs. Eyes that thigh and thighs that eye. Thighs of gregarious spring green. Oh, growing hedges, rippling like bread baked brown. Top with black lip softness. Ovens that heat and scotch and sin so. Thighs that quiver like liver. And upset nerves. Thighs of noise and oil, of sweat and slaps, power and passion and pain, plain or prime, of motionless, quietly shrinking or swelling, swaying or swooning. Thighs that thigh. And thighs that sigh, thighs that cry, and thighs that lie. Why thighs? Wise as winter, knowing many things, after having been bathed in themselves. Hone in the oil from their captive oasis <laughs> and brought to high sheens by the calm of lovers. Yeah. Yeah. Black women have thighs that agonize. Yeah. Its song, the black lawyer seen as warrior at the bench for Jimmy Long. Itch hour, itch hour in a courtroom warm with worry, where justice sometimes is a court jester, joker in a stacked deck. Itch hour. Also in a street world, 
bitching hour where truth is a color couch nightmare. Let my people go. Itch hour for steel tongue warrior whose color is handcuffs, is straight jacket, is cage, from whose clutches he must stage trial, stage trial, and community triumph. Let my people go. and stitching hour, bewitching hour, for warrior, wish bringer, oracle, mojo man, prophet of the larynx, peerless priest, black pontiff in exile, word wick and word spear. Itch hour. Yeah. Again. Again. <laughs> and the ghetto gong gong is silent. And the ghetto gong gong is silent. Silent in this place. In this joust room. Where black men caucus iridescent mouth magic. To juju judges and jaw frozen jurors. Itching hour, where mothers kneel or nod, and white bondsmen bargain, where hums flock father and sword sworn troubadour, caller, grand seer, summoner, sage and medicine man. Nat Turner, sunglass at the moaning bench. Malcolm at the pearly gates. Stokely stroking the river jug. King shoulder hosted at the mountain top. Let my people go. Wrong, based, lathered in blood, folk supple and song born, folk song and folk sung. Let my people go. Ike Padgett. the brother beautiful is not the brother beautiful Eugene Redman Jimmy Daniels on guitar I patch it on soprano sax and Evan Jefferson on conga drum Eugene Redman Eugene Redman